So you wanna know how to get stronger wrists for gymnastics and calisthenics? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you some awesome exercises that you can do to bulletproof your wrists. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'm also gonna share some awesome equipment that we use to help in this process and show you where you can get it super cheap. All that and more coming up. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image. Hi, in case we haven't met, my name is Rad Burmeister, co-founder of the Foundation Movement System and Unity Gym, the place where we measure health by the way the body performs and feels, not just how it looks. So we get people to nourish and move rather than just exercise and diet. Now in this video, I'm gonna teach you some awesome exercises to strengthen those wrists for gymnastics and calisthenics. When doing handstands or a lot of other gymnastics and calisthenics moves, it's these little suckers that are the weakest link. This is where you really suffer. And you're only as strong as your weakest link, so you can do all your strengthening exercises for your upper body and your core, but if these wrists aren't strong, then your gymnastics and calisthenics is going to suffer. So the first thing we're gonna do is called uh, forearm pronation and supination. So this is called forearm supination, this is forearm pronation. If you've never heard of those terms before, just remember holding a bowl of soup, and that's your supination there. So we've got one of these club bells. These are totally awesome, unreal bit of equipment for these exercises, for this wrist strengthening. This is a four kilo club bell, way too much for most people when they're learning, but I've been doing this for a while, so I can handle it. So what you do is, uh, when you start, you start near the center of the club bell, so the closer your hand is to the center, uh, the easier it is. And we're gonna hold the elbow uh, next to the side there and rotate from supination to pronation. Now what I'm trying to do, I'm intentionally trying to keep my wrist in line with my forearm, so I'm avoiding doing this, okay? And what that does is it actually points the club bell off on an angle there, you can see. So we're just going pronation, supination. Pronation, supination like that. And as you get stronger, of course, you can move your hand further from the center. It's a lot harder the further your hand goes from the center, okay? And you wanna to aim to do about 12 to 15 of those when you're starting. As you get stronger, you can go to a heavier weight and by using periodization, you can you know, work different rep ranges like uh, eight to 10 or 10 to 12. But as a starting uh, rep range, we recommend 12 to 15. The reason why higher rep ranges usually means a lower weight and uh, a little bit better for developing that tissue tolerance first to prevent injury, okay? Now, the next exercise, the next exercise we're gonna do here is called forearm flexion and extension. So this is forearm extension, and this is forearm flexion, or rather wrist flexion and wrist extension. And what we're gonna do is start with the forearm extension. So have your little fingers at the end of the dumbbells like that. So that would be having my thumbs at the end of the dumbbells. That's having my little fingers at the end of the dumbbells. And we're gonna turn them over like this. And the reason why you have your little fingers at the end is it forces the hands into that pronated position. So I've got my uh, forearms leaning onto the bench like this and I'm really trying to I'm putting some weight in my forearms so that they stay really still and from here I start at the bottom with my fingers open like this just hooking onto the dumbbell Then I'm going to curl my fingers up and then raise up as high as I can and then down slowly the reason why you open your fingers at the bottom is look at the angle in my wrist that's as far as I can go while I'm gripping onto the dumbbell now watch what happens to the angle of my wrists when I open my fingers See, that angle in the wrist just increases a little bit, so it just gives us a little bit of a further range of motion. So again, from here, we're gonna curl the fingers up, come up all the way, and back down slowly. Okay, 12 to 15 reps of those when you're starting. And then we're gonna go to forearm flexion. Now, most people are twice as strong with forearm flexion as they are with forearm extension, okay? I still have my little fingers at the end because it helps me into the supinated position. And I'm gonna start with my uh, hands open just like I did on the last exercise. We're gonna close the grip, curl up, and then back down slowly and open the grip. Close the grip, curl up as far as I can, back down slowly, and then open the grip. Okay, so uh, 12 to 15 reps doing, uh, this is like a, a A1 and A2 exercise, which means you do one set of one exercise, rest about 60 seconds, and then do one set of the other, rest 60 seconds, and repeat for three to five sets. 
So next one we're going to do is called radial and ulnar deviation. So that's referring to uh, the radius, which is the bone on the uh, inside of the forearm, and the ulnar, which is the bone on the uh, outside of the forearm. And so for radial deviation, we're going to hold on to the club bell, put the hand under the tricep like this, and we're going to just completely relax the arm. So this right arm here, this one, is holding the arm up. And then from here, we're going to lift up as high as we can and back down. With this one, we're gonna hold a really uh, strong grip. Um, again, we're gonna avoid this kink in the wrist. We're gonna try and keep that nice line from the forearm down to the wrist. So coming up, back down slowly. Back up, back down slowly. Up, back down slowly. Very simple exercise. For ulnar deviation, we're gonna turn the club bell over. For this one, just hold the weight down beside your body. Okay, and then from here bring it back a little bit and we're going to bring it up and back down slowly. Up and back down slowly. Most people are stronger with the ulnar deviation. So usually people can uh, uh, do a little bit more weight with the ulnar deviation. And uh, that's it. Again, three sets of those, 12 to 15 reps, uh, three to five sets, sorry, depending on how strong you are, pairing them together. So the next one we're going to do is a fin push-up. So from here, we're going to rest on the back of our wrists, roughly double shoulder width apart. This one is absolutely killer. So you really need to work up to this one. You can do a lot of damage if you're not ready for it. And so from here at the basic level, just on your knees, we're going to come down and back up like this. And then of course, as you get stronger, you can come out like this. And then once you're strong enough, you can go on your feet. A bonus with this one, if you want to make it even harder, you can get a little ball, maybe the size of a tennis ball in your hand, and if you hold on to that, the way that it causes the flexion through the forearm flexures, it makes it a lot harder. So this one you want to do uh, up to 10 reps, but whatever you can handle, and probably three sets of this one is going to be enough. Okay, so the dorsal push-up is another one that's pretty tricky for a lot of beginners. What we're going to do is turn our hands all the way in like this, and then you're going to do push-ups. So the same thing, of course, as a beginner, you can do them on your knees like this, and for more advanced, you can come down like this. Try and have your hands out in front of your head. Now, you might be thinking, why would you do push-ups like this, or why would you do push-ups on the back of your wrist? The reason why is because if you do calisthenics and you do gymnastics and you're messing around on your hands and trying to learn moves, someday you're gonna be in that position with a lot of weight on your hands. When will it happen? Tomorrow, next week, a year, two years, but someday it's gonna happen. And if you're not prepared, if you've never conditioned your wrist to be in that position and hold weight on it, that's the moment that you're gonna sprain your wrist or do serious damage. So the idea here is that we're strengthening our wrist in all of these different positions. And if you haven't seen it, our basic wrist conditioning routine, make sure you check that out. So that's uh, another video that we've got in this wrist conditioning series. But uh, yeah, that's the reason why we're doing all these different angles. Uh, and again, for this one, 10 reps is fine, uh, three sets. So the last thing we've got for you today is a bonus stretch here. What we're gonna do is come down, this is to stretch out the forearm extensors. We're gonna put the hand on the ground like this with a bent elbow, and I'm going to curl my fingers over to try and touch the crease in my wrist there. So I'm trying to touch that crease. I'm gonna force them down with this hand, and then from there, I'm gonna push that hand down into the ground and straighten that elbow. And that is an absolutely wicked stretch in my forearm. It's, uh, I can feel it right down the outside of my forearm and over my wrist. I'll do the other side because you always got to even yourself out. So from here, I'm going to push down into the wrist there, and then I'm going to try and straighten that arm all the way. Give it a try, it's awesome, it's a brutal stretch. You can hold this for you know, 20 to 30 seconds is a really good time. And um, yeah, you can do that at the start or at the end of your workout, especially if you experience pain in the forearms and in the wrist, that's a really good one for you guys. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to our channel so you can see more videos for people just like you and everyone else in our tribe that wanna learn how to move rather than just exercise. And make sure that you click that notification bell so that you get notified every time we do a new video. Until next time, we'll see you soon. Hi, my name is Rad Burmeister. Uh, yeah.
and Unity Gym, the place where health is measured by the way there, where we teach you how to ex Unity Gym, the place where we measure health by the way the body performs and feels, not just how it looks.